Hello and welcome to the episode. Today I'm performing the 300 mile first service on my 2022 Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. I will be covering tappet adjustment and oil and filter change. I have time stamped each process. As you can see I have covered 306 miles. I do encourage owners to work on their machines because it gives you a better connection of the motorcycle. However, I cannot guarantee this will not affect your warranty, but please proceed at your own risk. First thing you want to do is put the bike on its main stand, like so. We are doing the tappets first, so make sure your engine is completely cold and hasn't been started for at least six hours. Remove the right side panel. Pull the lever and remove the seat. Unscrew these two 10mm bolts to remove the fuel tank. Put all your bolts in a safe place. Lift the rear part of the tank and slide it back. Get someone to hold the tank while you pull out the two breather hoses, fuel pump plug, fuel hose and fuel level sensor. The main fuel hose is a push fit clip, so you need to squeeze both outer sides of the pipe and pull the pipe at the same time. Here is what the connections look like. The main fuel line, two breather pipes, the fuel pump plug and the fuel level sensor plug. They all have pull tabs to release. Put the tank in the safe place out of the way. Now remove both spark plug leads and remove the plugs. As you can see, these plugs have a nice healthy color. Check the spark plug gaps. They should be between 0.7 millimeters and 0.8 millimeters. Remove the four eight millimeter rocker cover bolts. Unscrew them in a cross pattern in the order as shown. I should mention it's a good idea to lay the plugs into the spark plug holes in case anything drops into them. Carefully remove all the bolts making sure the rubber gasket comes off with them. Lift the rocker cover and separate the gasket, keeping it attached to the lower part of the engine. You can unscrew the ABS pump and the horns to make it easier but I managed to remove it without doing so. Place the rocker cover in a safe place. Remove the left crank bolt cover with a 14 mm Allen key. Put the O-ring inside the cover screw cap. Use a 17 mm socket and a T-bar to turn the crank counter-clockwise only. Do not use a ratchet here because it could bounce back causing damage to the clutch assembly. Look at the crankshaft and line up the L as shown. This gets the left cylinder at top dead center. The rocker arms should have very small free play. If they don't, turn another full revolution. Here are the measurements, 0.08mm for the intake and 0.18mm for the exhaust side. Check the gaps as shown. These two exhaust valves were spot on. You should feel some resistance when pulling the gauge back out. Both inlets were too loose. Unscrew the 10mm lock nut 
and use a flat screwdriver to turn them. As you tighten, keep the centre still. It will take some trial and error, but you'll get there. Once done, turn the engine over twice and recheck. Now it's time to check the right side. Line up the top crankshaft mark as shown. Check they have free play as before. Here are the measurements again. The two front exhaust valves were loose. Once adjusted and checked, move to the inlet side. Both my inlet gaps were too big on this side. Once adjusted, turn the engine over twice and recheck. Clean the rocker cover and carefully slide back. Make sure the gasket slots into the grooves and lays flush all the way around. I didn't use any sealant here as it's only done 300 miles. Next time I will replace the gasket and use sealant on the half moon ends as per factory. Just snip these up, use your palm with a small ratchet. The torque settings are 12 Nm, which isn't a lot, so be very careful not to over tighten these. Install the spark plugs and the leads. Push the leads on very firmly. Install the crank inspection cover. Just nip this up to eight Nm. Wipe down the whole engine, removing greasy fingerprints. Install the tank. Clip the main fuel pipe in last and make sure you hear it click when you push it in. Install the side panel and then install the seat. Start the engine and let it run for 10 minutes, checking for any leaks around the rocker cover gasket.
Now we're going to drain the oil. Place a suitable bowl underneath. Turn the engine off and unscrew the 13mm drain plug bolt. Be careful, this will be very hot. Allow to cool for 5 minutes if you wish. But warm oil flows better and will drain more effectively. While it's draining, unscrew the oil filler cap. Clean the sump bolt magnet. Using a suitable tool, remove the oil filter. The link to this tool is in the description below. Clean the surface and make sure the rubber seal has come off with the old filter, like this one did. You don't have to do this, but I refer to. Take the bike off the stand and tilt from side to side. You can see the extra oil dripping out from the crankcase. Clean the sump bolt thread and replace the washer. You can flip the washer and reuse it. Clean the mating surface and install the sump bolt. This is tightened to 35 newtometers. Pre-fill the oil filter with fresh oil. And smear the seal with oil. Some oil will drip, but not too much. So you will need to keep the bowl in place when you do so. Get a good grip and tighten by hand. Tighten as tight as you can, do not use the tool to install. Here is the oil I always use, it's vastly available and exceeds manufacturer specs. Use a clean jug and put one litre in at each time, checking the level as you go along. Once you have reached the max mark on the glass, which is around 3.1 litres, then install the filler cap. Start the engine and check for any leaks. Turn off the engine and let it set for two minutes and recheck the oil level. While you're here, check chain tension, tire pressures and condition, 
check wheels and spokes check all nuts and bolts checking brakes and pads check shock condition adjust any clutch and throttle with free play check all vacuum hoses brake and fuel lines make sure you dispose of your old oil at your local recycle center or take it to your local garage here you can see after 300 miles the running in oil is very dark a job well done here are the tools you will need feeler gauge 8mm socket 10mm spanner flat head screwdriver 14mm spark plug socket 17mm socket some clean cloth 10 watt 50 oil oil filter tool 13mm socket genuine oil filter a clean jug and funnel and some protective gloves links to all items are listed below right so i've just completed the first service i'm on 307 miles done the oil change adjusted the tappets as you've seen six were out of spec mainly the inlet side the, the gaps were a bit bigger and one of the exhausts was a bit tight i desperately need fuel fuel gauge is flashing at me because i let it go really low to make it easier for me to take the tank off but the bike feels sweet the throttle is more crisp it ticks over better the revs drop down quicker and they don't go below a thousand like they were doing before as i was revving there was dropping below a thousand and then picking back up again i've got the castrol oil i've used it for years as i've said it's fastly available i can get a trade discount on it nothing wrong with that oil fantastic oil and that's what i always use in my motorcycles I will be doing the oil change every 4,000 anyway, or every year, whichever comes first, even though the book says 6,000. I am a qualified mechanic and I use genuine parts, so you would hope that I would have a leg to stand on if I need a warranty claim, but I didn't feel the need to pay someone £295 two weeks after I just paid six grand for this bike because that is how long it took me to reach 300 miles that's a lot of money I do encourage people to go to independent dealers but it just didn't make sense for me to pay that money and plus there was a six week wait a six week wait to book the service in which I would have well exceeded 300 by then so from a warranty point of view, it made more sense to get it done on time by myself. So that is a disclaimer. I cannot guarantee you will avoid warranty if you do this yourself. But it's quite easy to do. So if you're confident enough, go for it. The gearbox feels smoother. Not that it was clunky anyway. Just seems to transition in gear. A lot quicker bike is running lovely i love it 300 miles later still loving it no issues at all so on that note i really appreciate you watching please subscribe for more of these videos put in lots of videos on the interceptor my wife has just purchased a royal enfield meteor so we are the royal enfield couple doing plenty of calf runs dual vlogs i really appreciate you watching until then i've been nick i'll catch you on the next one ride safe